a key metric that we can use to actually see how well Tesla are selling their vehicles in the Chinese market is by looking at the Tesla registrations. And last week, the Tesla registrations in China were very strong. Data is actually showing that China insured 17,000 Teslas last week. So this was between the dates of the 17th of June and the 23rd. Registrations is pretty simple. It's just referring to the number of new Tesla vehicles that have been registered for insurance in China. And this was the best week of 2024 for so far. And this 17 and a half thousand included 6,000 Model 3 vehicles, which is the highest since the Model 3 Highland launch last November. So why do we care so much about the Tesla registrations in China? Well, we should care about Tesla registrations across the globe because it gives us insight into how well Tesla is performing in that given market. But China specifically is a very important market to Tesla both in terms of China being Tesla's second largest market, but also China being the largest EV market in the world. But registrations in China have shown a lot of growth, but they've also shown a lot of fluctuation and a lot of volatility, especially over the recent few months. But this latest week of data represents a substantial 50% increase, 50% from the previous week. And that shows us that there is strong sales momentum building. Of course, short term, you know, things go up and down and one strong week doesn't mean that Tesla's doing really well in the Chinese market. And also, you know, one week of low numbers doesn't mean that it's all over for Tesla in China either. So it's important to actually zoom out and see what's happening over time. The quarter is up by 13.1% and hopefully this is indicating to us that Tesla can finish the quarter strongly. Year to date, Tesla China's registrations have been slightly behind the 2023 numbers. However, due to the recent surge in registrations, this could suggest that Tesla is actually closing this gap quite rapidly. But remember, every car that Tesla sell globally is another robot on wheels out there. It's another chance for FSD revenue in the future. It's another chance for a bigger robo taxi fleet. Also, we have recently heard the news that Tesla have added Mercedes to their coming soon supercharging network list. You can see that Ford and Rivian are already supported, but now there's Mercedes that have been added to the list of coming soon. Now, this does not mean that we've only just heard the announcement that Mercedes will be adopting the North American charging standard and getting access to the network. In fact, that announcement came back in July last year. But this is more of a, a recent development to that story. We know that we are also waiting for many other companies to actually be on that supported list to even get into that coming soon list. Because when we think about how this worked, Ford announced first that they were um, adopting the North American charging standard and that they were going to get access to Tesla's supercharging network. And they're supported. After that, I believe, came Rivian, they're supported, but you know, we've got many others. We've got GM, we've got um, BMW, Nissan, and so on. But this does make us ask the question, why can't Tesla just give access to every single company at once? It will be in part due to the timing of each company's agreement with Tesla, but also there are other things to factor in here as well. For example, the technical integration. Each EV will use various charging standards and connectors. Tesla uses their proprietary North American charging standard, while many other automakers use the combined charging system, CCS. And to ensure compatibility, these other um, companies even need to adopt the North American charging standard into their vehicles or Tesla um, need to be able to provide them with a connector that makes them compatible. But I suppose this can be done quite quickly. For example, Ford, they didn't mess around at all on this. They purchased adapters from Tesla and gave them to all their EV owners so that those customers actually had access to the charging network. And then in the meantime, the companies can update their vehicles, they can redesign their vehicles to actually accommodate the North American charging standard. Um, but that obviously doesn't just happen overnight. Also, we have to think about capacity management. At first, the Tesla charging network was designed just to support their own fleet of vehicles. It wasn't designed really necessarily to support everyone else's vehicles from the off. Of course, I think Elon had it in his head that eventually it would get there. You know, he wants to be able to support other EVs on the road, not just his own. But at first, especially, it was just designed to support their own vehicles and they've had to expand the supercharging network over time. And if they were just to open up the network to all EV owners simultaneously, this could actually lead to overcrowding. And then as a knock-on effect of that, 
there could be reduced availability for actual Tesla owners. So that could cause a bit of an issue. So I think having a phased approach somewhat allows Tesla to actually monitor and manage the increased demand. Alongside this, you need to make upgrades to the infrastructure so that a larger number of EVs can be handled. And I'm sure as well, like I kind of said, the different agreements will have different financial implications, different arrangements, different timings in them, and all things like that need to be considered. We already know from Tesla's earnings that their services and other revenue section is growing over time. Now, we don't really know the exact percentage out of that amount that is related to, that is due to the supercharging network, but it does seem like companies such as Ford, Mercedes, will have to pay a fee to Tesla for their customers to actually be able to access the supercharging network. Whether this is a one-off fee, a reoccurring fee, or how much it is, is unknown yet. But also on top of that, the customers of these companies will need to pay Tesla to use the supercharging network. And I believe these amounts are more than what a Tesla owner would have to pay to charge. So this services and other revenue that Tesla has will grow over time. Do let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below.